Trofim Denisovich Lysenko was a Soviet biologist and agronomist. Lysenko rejected Mendelian genetics in favor of pseudoscientific ideas termed Lysenkoism. His experimental research in improved crop yields earned the support of Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, especially following the famine and loss of productivity resulting from forced collectivization in several regions of the Soviet Union in the early 1930s. In 1940, he became director of the Institute of Genetics within the USSR's Academy of Sciences, and Lysenko's anti-Mendelian doctrines were further secured in Soviet science and education by the exercise of political influence and power. Scientific dissent from Lysenko's theories of environmentally acquired inheritance was formally outlawed in 1948. Though Lysenko remained at his post in the Institute of Genetics until 1965, his influence on Soviet agricultural practice had declined by the 1950s. Early Rise, Trofim Lysenko, the son of Denis and Oksana Lysenko, was born to a peasant family in Karlova, Poltava Governorate and attended the Kiev Agricultural Institute. In 1927, at 29 years of age, working at an agricultural experiment station in Azerbaijan, he embarked on the research that would lead to his 1928 paper on vernalization, which drew wide attention because of its potential practical implications for Soviet agriculture. Severe cold and lack of winter snow had destroyed many early winter wheat seedlings. By treating wheat seeds with moisture as well as cold, Lysenko induced them to bear a crop when planted in spring. Lysenko coined the term jarovization to describe this chilling process, which he used to make the seeds of winter cereals behave like spring cereals. However, this method had already been known by farmers since the 1800s, and had recently been discussed in detail by Gustav Gassner as vernalization. Lysenko's exaggerated claims for massively increased yields were based on plantings over a few hectares, and he further incorrectly claimed that the vernalized transformation could be inherited a euro that is, that the offspring of a vernalized plant would themselves go on to flower more quickly, with a vernalization treatment. The conversion of winter wheat into spring wheat by Lysenko was not a new discovery. However, this work has been initially supported by Nikolai Vavilov, who subsequently became one of Lysenko's critics and a victim of political repressions against geneticists instigated by Lysenko. Lysenko was praised in the Soviet newspaper Pravda for his claims to have discovered a method to fertilize fields without using fertilizers or minerals, and to have shown that a winter crop of peas could be grown in Azerbaijan, turning the barren fields of the Transcaucasus green in winter, so that cattle will not perish from poor feeding and the peasant Turk will live through the winter without trembling for tomorrow. Lysenko argued that there is not only competition, but also mutual assistance among individuals within a species, and that mutual assistance also exists between different species. According to Lysenko, the organism and the conditions required for its life are an inseparable unity. Different living bodies require different environmental conditions for their development. By studying these requirements we come to know the qualitative features of the nature of organisms, the qualitative features of heredity. Heredity is the property of a living body to require definite conditions for its life and development and to respond in a definite way to various conditions. By the late 1920s, the Soviet political leaders had given their support to Lysenko. This support was a consequence, in part, of policies put in place by the Communist Party to rapidly promote members of the proletariat into leadership positions in agriculture, science and industry. Party officials were looking for promising candidates with backgrounds similar to Lysenko's, born of a peasant family, without formal academic training or affiliations to the academic community. Lysenko in particular impressed political officials with his success in motivating peasants to return to farming. The Soviet's collectivist reforms forced the confiscation of agricultural land holdings from peasant farmers and heavily damaged the country's overall food production, and the dispossessed peasant farmers posed new problems for the regime. Many had abandoned the farms altogether. Many more waged resistance to collectivization by poor work quality and pilfering. The dislocated and disenchanted peasant farmers were a major political concern to the Soviet leadership. Lysenko emerged during this period by advocating radical but unproven agricultural methods, 
and also promising that the new methods provided wider opportunities for year-round work in agriculture. Lysenko proved himself very useful to the Soviet leadership by re-engaging peasants to return to work, helping to secure from them a personal stake in the overall success of the Soviet revolutionary experiment. After Stalin, following Stalin's death in 1953, Lysenko retained his position, with the support of the new leader Nikita Khrushchev. However, mainstream scientists re-emerged, and found new willingness within Soviet government leadership to tolerate criticism of Lysenko, the first opportunity since the late 1920s. In 1962 three of the most prominent Soviet physicists, Yakov Borisovich Zeldovich, Vitaly Jainsberg, and Piotr Kapitza, presented a case against Lysenko, proclaiming his work as false science. They also denounced Lysenko's application of political power to silence opposition and eliminate his opponents within the scientific community. These denunciations occurred during a period of structural upheaval in Soviet government, during which the major institutions were purged of the strictly ideological and political machinations which had controlled the work of the Soviet Union's scientific community for several decades under Stalin. In 1964, Physicist Andrei Sakharov spoke out against Lysenko in the General Assembly of the Academy of Sciences. He is responsible for the shameful backwardness of Soviet biology and of genetics in particular, for the dissemination of pseudo-scientific views, for adventurism, for the degradation of learning, and for the defamation, firing, arrest, even death, of many genuine scientists. The Soviet press was soon filled with anti lysenkoit articles and appeals for the restoration of scientific methods to all fields of biology and agricultural science. In 1965 Lysenko was removed from his post as director of the Institute of Genetics at the Academy of Sciences and restricted to an experimental farm in Moscow's Lenin Hills. After Khrushchev's dismissal in 1964, the president of the Academy of Sciences declared that Lysenko's immunity to criticism had officially ended. An expert commission was sent to investigate records kept at Lysenko's experimental farm. His secretive methods and ideas were revealed. A few months later, a devastating critique of Lysenko was made public. As a result, Lysenko was immediately disgraced in the Soviet Union. Lysenko died in Moscow in 1976 and was interred in the Kuntsevo Cemetery. See also, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, Gregor Mendel, V.A.S.K.H. Nil. References Further reading, Graham, Loren, Science in Russia and the Soviet Union. Graham, Loren, What Have We Learned About Science and Technology from the Russian Experience? Jarevsky, David, The Lysenko Affair. Lee Court, Dominique, Proletarian Science? The Case of Lysenko. Lysenko, Trofim, The Science of Biology Today. Text of an address evoked by the international discussion of the subject of inheritance of acquired characteristics, according to an introductory note. Delivered before a session of a meeting of the V.I. Lenin Academy of Agricultural Sciences on July 31, 1948, when Lysenko, its president, was at the apex of his power. For an online version of the text see the Lysenko report provided in the external links section, below. Medvedev, Tsors, The Rise and Fall of T. D. Lysenko, Soifer, Valerie N., Lysenko and the Tragedy of Soviet Science, New Brunswick, Rutgers University Press, 1994. Gardner, Martin, Fads and Fallacies in the Name of Science. Dover Publications, New York. See Chapter 12. External links, Biography at NNDB, Lysenkoism in the Skeptics Dictionary, Trofim Denisovich Lysenko by Hugo S. Cunningham, Ronald Fisher. What Sort of Man is Lysenko? Listener, 40, 874 Euro 875 a Euro Contemporary Commentary by a British Evolutionary Biologist, Letter from Lysenko's Parents to Stalin, Pravda, January 3, 1936. Lee Court. Dominique, Proletarian Science? The Case of Lysenko, Atlantic Highlands, Humanities Press, London, this digital edition first published 2003, BBC programme on Lysenko, Skeptoid No. 472, 
Lysenko and Lesser Science Grifters at Skeptoid.